All right. Peace to the family. Peace to the family. Thank you for your patience, as always, family. Thank you for your patience. Griff is on the West Coast. Uh, I'm in New York. Uh, it's been hard for us to kind of get everything situated. Griff is super busy, and I'm doing what I'm doing. So it's an honor to have Griff on here tonight. If any of you are listeners, old school listeners from over a decade ago, <laughs> you know, you would know me and Griff used to have a, a weekly show on the same YouTube channel. So, yeah, we have made history together. We have gotten millions of views together. I have talked about so many things. Listen, we're about to get started, family. Make sure you hit the like button. Tell your friends and family. Brother Rich is live with the living legend, Professor Griff. We're going to have a great conversation tonight. Before we do, as always, let me get into this Black Magic 363 intro, and we'll be right back in about one minute, family. Sometimes I wake up in the morning feeling stressed Sometimes I wake up feeling like I never slept Sometimes I don't want to wake up cause I'm depressed But today when I woke up I felt blessed Yes, I'm thankful I could breathe Thankful for the breath, thankful for the heart beating in my chest Superman S, I fell in love with life Not afraid of death, fell in love with life Fell in love with sex, and I confess I love my gold, melanated flesh It absorbs, it protects like a bulletproof vest I kill all my demons and then I ask who's next I'm the son of Osiris, I'm coming for the suit test Suplex, God is blood, God is great I'm thankful for the food on my plate I just ate mashed potatoes and steak mm -hmm. Victory is sweet, come get a taste The flavor when your air is baked Mac with the bass Been broke, can't break Got money in the bank Every day someone dies Someone's born, get a case Set a date, get a suit Get a tie, get a date God is always on time Never late, celebrate Get in shape, meditate Levitate, elevate Men destroy, men create Well, well Women menstruate and the sound I make emanates my life and the song I sing celebrate my life celebrate your life celebrate your life celebrate today celebrate tonight celebrate your life celebrate your life everything was dark God invented life everybody celebrate your life celebrate your life celebrate today celebrate tonight Accepted all my wrongs, celebrate the right When I die, celebrate my death See what heaven's got I feel glorious, victorious The metal dangle on my And we are live right now Griff, I gotta get you on there, Griff I took the last 15 shows from StreamYard And I sliced <laughs> it up and made that So I gotta all get right. you up there, Griff Because you've you been here with me from the beginning, man Right Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen Gotta bring back to the show, to the platform The one and only living legend Mr. Public Enemy Professor Griff, welcome back, my brother. Oh, give thanks. It's a pleasure to be back, good bro. Pleasure. Indeed, indeed. Always a pleasure having you. Always I uh, learn every time you're on here. I appreciate what you bring to the movement, Professor Griff. And um, yeah, you just you've been doing this for a while, Griff. And I'm seeing you what you said 15 years ago <laughs> become true. We do what you was I know you were going to say that. <laughs> they called you a hater, Griff. They said you was just a bitter hater. Yep. You was a bitter hater. Man, I just watched another video from D1. And uh, that's the rapper who said things about Jim Jones and, and Rick Ross and the, and the hip hop mm -hmm. and the cursing. And he said he came out and said how they propositioned him. A, a male, a gatekeeper propositioned right. him to do something, you know, homosexual if he wanted. Right to get to a certain level in the hip hop game. So this is something that has been, it's embarrassing as for a man, Griff, to come and say, yo, this nigga hit on me, yo. Like, niggas be like, what, you punched that nigga in the face? Like the first thing a person, you, right. you, you, what you did after that? So it's embarrassing for a lot of these dudes to come forward. So this is new seeing uh, whether it's Cat Williams, D1, um, Gary Owen, the white comedian, he came right. out and said he got proposition. Um, so these male actors and entertainers are coming out saying, yo, this shit is true. Griff ain't a hater. Like, 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 like we've been taught for the last 15 years, just talking all that Illuminati bullshit. But listen, we're gonna have a good talk on culture. Wait, can I can I can I say something yeah. to that? Oh, of course. I'm sorry. This whole, I, this whole idea of Griff said it 15 years ago, people are saying it under their breath, brother. They're not coming out. You don't see that online. You see a few people that's saying, Griff, isn't this what you said? 15, 20 years ago, I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I 
what I said. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But no one that have listened to me and have taken notes, bought the books, was at the lecture, especially the lectures with me and Black Dot. Do you understand what I'm saying? No one is saying, okay, yeah, Griff, you said this, and let me tag your name in what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm putting up. I don't, I don't see that, good bro. But uh -huh. listen, but not that I'm expecting it, but I want the people to know tonight that these things that you're hearing right now, I've that. said them. I've said them on your platform, yeah, on my yeah. platform, and I said them at the hundreds of lectures that I've done. And that that need yeah. that needs to be said. I'm not pinning no medals on myself. Whatever, but I warned the people back then that this is what's happening and it's going to get worse. And it did. So I applaud all of those individuals that are speaking up and speaking out because it's actually validating what I said 15 years ago. Griff, let me ask you a question, Griff. And um, I'm not trying to be funny or anything like that. I'm just trying to be transparent and be honest with this whole situation. Mm -hmm. Do you feel as though anybody has ever came at you in a funny style way? Uh, like you're trying to get somewhere or get a project going on and whether it be a movie, it could be anything, Griff, a movie, a clothing line. Have you ever felt like anybody in the entertainment industry tried to come at you sideways, Griff? No, not at all. I think people are afraid of me in that way. <laughs> they just yeah. afraid of my ass. They're afraid of what I might say and then, and then they're truly afraid what the hell I might do. But you you right. Right. I, right. Yeah, it's just one of them kind of situations because I think it's the way I carry myself. I think mm. when people see me and say, damn, that's a Griff. Oh, I thought he was taller and bigger. You understand what I'm saying? But yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't play. You understand what I'm saying? And my demeanor, the way I carry myself, my character, my personality, the way I speak, I speak very intentionally about things. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And the stance yeah. I take, cats be like, no, that's not the one to fuck with. Indeed. <laughs> and I, Indeed. I think that's what people pick up. You understand Indeed. what I'm saying? Plain and it simple. And shout out to um um Black Dot. He's in the um an audience. He's in the chat right now. Urban X TV. Uh, make sure you go to Urban X. I believe NYC. Uh, they got with some of the best clothing, um, out there right now. Amazing quality. So shout out to Black Dot and my. Hold on, let me get, let me get my Urban X hat. Hold on. Indeed. Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dot thanks, is Dot. Really appreciate that. Dot hooked me oh, up for real. That's fire. That's fire. All about that. Nah, Bridge Brother Rich. This one is mine. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Dot, can I get that hat, Dot? <laughs> can I get that hat, Dot? You see how Griff is stunting on me, y'all? Right. <laughs> get that hat, man. Wow. Yeah. Hey, so but, you know, yeah, go ahead, Griff. I was, I was just saying. So when I when I hear. Cat Williams, Gary Owens, and the rest of these cats saying what they're saying, especially when the women <clears throat> say what they say. I, Jaguar, for everyone from Jaguar right, right on down, I'm like, yep. Yeah. There it is. I told you. It was coming. And a lot of these people that's coming out, you talk talking 15 years ago. So imagine where they were in their careers 15 years ago. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I, I can honestly say, man, I said it. And I said it in people's faces. And I'm waiting for the blowback. I'm waiting for them to come at me with something. And none of them ever did. It's like, oh, okay. It, I think the strategy was if you leave him alone long enough, he'll just be quiet. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I think that was the strategy. Griff, when you hear these stories and um, shout to the, there's a lot of good brothers and sisters in Hollywood. I'm not just trying to attack or everybody. No. I'm just, um, this is a topic of discussion. And if this is happening, this is serious. And this is something that's, Real sick. Um, if there's an industry that's uh, making males perform acts, or even if you're making females perform acts against your will, um, it's just that that's something that's sick and something that you know should be brought to the light. And I think that we're going to see a lot of things that's in the darkness brought to the light right. this year. I want to ask you, Griff, do you, when you hear stories, being that you was in the entertainment industry, you know how difficult it could be to navigate in that industry. Mm -hmm. You may have a different. You may have, you may be more empathetic to the people behind the scenes because you know what they have to go through. You went right. through it with Chuck D. You went through it with Flavor Flav and a lot of other your comrades in, in that in that in that group. Uh, do you feel as though these people are victims, or do you have no sympathy for them? Like fuck that, they ain't have to do that shit. You know, whatever, whatever. Like, how do you view the people that who are coming out saying this happened to them or that happened to them? No, I truly believe that they're victims, and I'm de I'm definitely empathetic. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not one of the individuals that's that raw and hardcore to say that, oh, man, they knew. They knew what they were getting into. You never should have signed that or did X, Y, and Z. When you're right. trying to navigate that, that those areas of the industry, and you mm -hmm. know absolutely nothing about them, you, you've heard 
some things, but you truly don't necessarily believe them. But now that it's you and you're in that space and you don't want to go back to bring the average dude <clears> to work <throat> at Home Depot and Walmart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might say, I, I don't know, I might take my chances with signing this deal. You understand what I'm saying? I'll yeah. deal with that stuff when it when it comes. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But then when you have to, when it comes and hits you in the face and you actually have to cross that bridge, it becomes a whole different kind of thing to kind of deal with simply because you've never been faced with that ever before. I read something recently about something about what little Nas X just said. He said he feel with his song, Jay Christ, I believe that's the name of it. He feels that he's crossed the line. <laughs> so in answering your question, brother Rich, these individuals have a conscience and they know what they will and will not do. But these kind of situations that Cat Williams, Jaguar writings, or some other people talked about, it will definitely test you, good bro. It's just that I didn't want I didn't want that life that bad for me to do backflips for no one because right. I'm not compromising myself. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Um, as you all, as you already know, my wife Soleil walked away from a seven figure deal. So why, why exactly? So there won't be any rumors. Why exactly did she walk away from the deal now? She walked away because simply because they was trying to groom her. You know that conveyor belt that they were yeah. grooming young artists on to be the next, you yeah, know, uh, female artist that you know that comes out on the stage half naked, shaking this, doing that, doing yeah. whatever for that position because they yeah. had to find the next one where they yeah. was grooming her for that, and she was like, absolutely not. We're not doing that. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And walked away from a seven-figure deal. Whew. You understand what I'm saying? So when you start talking about, no, I'm not going to compromise myself, and I'm going to live in integrity and move in <laughs> integrity, I'm going to move with a purpose on purpose, yeah, then you got to say this. So if you know something, um, I can make some money. I'm going to leave that money right on over there. All uh, Mace, Mace said it about Puffy. He said, all money ain't good. That, all money ain't good money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mace was absolutely correct, man. Mm, mm, mm. He's absolutely correct. But my thing is when you find those individuals that will do anything for some chump change, yeah, them people are not to be trusted with themselves. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? If little Nas X can come forward and say, you know something, that is crossing the line, dealing with the whole idea of people's belief system, the thing that they depend on every day, the thing that they get on their hands and knees for every single day you know i tainted that i corrupted that i quote unquote shitted on that just to make some money in the music industry no even he says he went too far yo griff i remember this is probably like um was we in 2024 this is probably like 10 years ago we did a show on steve harvey we was talking about something steve harvey has said and one of the things he has said was and he became very successful if you call that success and you know, I think he's a brilliant businessman in a sense and, um, you know, good at comedy and whatever, whatever. But one thing that he said that I didn't like and I brought to your attention is when he said, your children can't eat integrity. I was like, whoa. And otherwise he was talking to the young brother. I forgot who exactly he was talking to. Right. But when he said that, I was just like, oh, man, like, damn, man, like, th here we go with the cash rules, everything around me mentality. Exactly. And um, that so, hasn't so gotten us anywhere, Griff. How about Exactly. Because we have to operate yeah. in, in integrity. If we don't, I don't think anything else moves in the way it's supposed to move. When I say that, I mean, it's not going to move in the way that the creator intended for it to move if we don't move in integrity. Right, right. You, you have no foundation. Integrity is an integral part of whatever you're trying to build. You understand what I'm saying? Trustworthiness. These things are in, uh, they're integral, man, and we need to under, understand that. If we're not going to move in such a way where it builds a, a solid foundation, then we should go into areas where it doesn't take us, it doesn't cause us to have any high degree of integrity. Mm -hmm. She's right. Steve Harvey sat with Monique and said that. Okay. Basically like, saying. look, this is the money game. Wow, for real? It's the money game? No. Even in you getting money, there's still a degree of integrity. And I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I sat and watched, what's her name? Sexy Red? Yeah. Interview she did on The Breakfast Club? Yeah. Yeah, to a degree. She was moving in a certain degree 
of integrity. She says, no, I'm in control of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm basically doing this when I want to do it. If I, they said I shouldn't get pregnant right now, I shouldn't do X, Y, and Z. She says, no, this is my life. Right, so right. that shows you they understand what they're doing. Yeah. But do they know that karma is a bitch? You understand what I'm saying? And the creator don't play with that. If that's the energy that you're putting out, you're about to have a child. And your child is now going to be rid on, you know, whatever sexy red song is. I don't really get into it. I hate even repeating the title sometimes. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The pound clown or whatever the hell. So it's like, it's like now your child has to grow up and be fed that same thing. Now, how you go? You see how karma works? Yeah. Do you, you understand? Know we could go deep into the whole idea of the muscle tension, the nerves, the frequency of the music, and how it's affecting her. Her, her child is in her her belly right now, but we're not gonna get that deep. But no karma is at work. Well, you let me ask you this. Saying? You know, we never got real deep into spirituality on the show. We touch on it, and I know you go there. Um, I just appreciate yeah, yeah, yeah. Your speaking points and what's going on in our culture, I think, is very necessary. In terms of karma, Griff, a, let's say a sexy red. Let's say if she's authentically, let's say Griff, sexy red is authentically ratchet. Does a person and she's doing, she's being who she is. She's authentically ratchet okay. versus a person who sells, who's not authentically ratchet, but will sell a ass and be ratchet for a couple of dollars. Do you think those two people have the same karma? I'm just being myself. I'm authentically ratchet. This is the shit I do versus I'm not authentically ratchet, but I'm going to sell every piece of my ass to get this dollar and be whoever you need me to be. Do you think those two people get the same karma? Griff? That's the beautiful thing about the divine laws that govern the universe. The divine law of karma don't care if you got red hair, bro. It don't care what your <clears throat> name is. It don't care what time you wake up. They don't care what you eat. Karma don't care about that. Karma is karma. You don't have to believe in karma. It's going to operate regardless of whether you believe in it or not. So, yeah, the same thing will befall both of them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Simply because the breath that you breathe, your exhale, your inhale, between your thoughts that go out and the ones that you take in, it don't lie. Both of those individuals know something is wrong. I wanted to put a word in there, but I don't want to confuse anyone. Something is wrong with the way I'm conducting myself. Because if not my mama, my mama's 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 mama. Mm -hmm. You understand? Taught me better. And if none of them taught you, right? The mere fact that the creator the, the creator deposited this whole idea of these, these divine things in you, I'm sure one day mm -hmm. that moved you to this particular point in your life, one day you called on the creator. Whatever name that you use, you called on the creator. You understand right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know it's incorrect. Why is it that we always tend to call on the creator when something is wrong that we want the creator to correct? Mm -hmm. I don't want to use the term God because people might get that confused with other things. Like I'm speaking now and people think I'm talking about religion and I'm not. It's spirituality. These are divine laws that govern the universe. They're going to happen regardless. You understand what I'm saying? So we know that there's a creator there for us to call. But we only call when we feel our life is in danger or we messed up or we feel karma is coming back around. And then we get on our knees and, oh, Lord, this, just give me one more chance, yada, 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 what we will. You understand what I'm saying? So we instinctively know, but we do just the opposite. We do what is diametrically opposed to what the creator instructed us to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Griff, so um, let's talk about uh, politics for a second. We're in a, um, a year where, you know, it's a presidential year, Griff. Biden is out there eating uh, chicken with, with, with Negroes. Um, what was that? Cook out the... <laughs> He, what was he eating? Um, uh, chicken salad. I forgot what exactly he was eating, but man, it's sad. Man, it's sad. With what, what, the pandering that goes on is absolutely sad. Um, in terms of politics, first of all, Griff, let me ask you: Do you, do you, do you vote at all? Do you participate no, in the voting I, system? I don't. I don't vote at all. Not at all. It's two wings of the same damn bird. You understand what I'm saying? And the right. one that's controlling 
the bird is the ones we never see. Right. So regardless of who you vote for, they make that decision who is going to be the next puppet. I mean, the next president, excuse me. That was a 40 <laughs> slip. You understand? Yeah. You know, we see what the, pres the present president is doing now. The millions of people are saying one thing, and he's doing just the opposite. Right. So how much power do you really have? Stop that. No, so I don't vote. Answer your question very directly. No, um, I, I don't vote. I just don't have, I have no faith, no belief in this whole idea of voting for a president. The, the, the comeback to that from a typical person, black person in this society would say, mm -hmm. Griff, you claim to be so pro-black, Griff, your ancestors died for the right to vote. Mm -hmm. Why would you embarrass your ancestors or, 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 or they, they, they did so much. They went through so much suffering just for the opportunity to vote. And here you are not taking your ass down there and voting, Griff. A lot of people will see contradiction with it that because you belong to public enemy, because you claim to be so uh, righteous, Griff. Well, my thing is that the ancestors died for a lot of things. <laughs> we just can't isolate the voting things. And I want that. <laughs> in, and I would say to that individual very nice and politely, prove it. <laughs> prove that which ancestors, which group of them died for the right for you to vote. No, they probably died to, to 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 bring about a means to whatever the issues that were going on, and we use the vehicle mm. of voting mm. to meet the, meet those ends, to meet those mm. particular needs. Mm. Not necessarily mm. died to vote. Mm. You understand mm. what I'm saying? So gotcha. I actually died for that a is. lot of things. And then when did all these people become so ans uh, worshiping ancestors and knowing about the ancestors? If well, they knew that much, then they wouldn't know the answer to my question is absolutely 1,000% on point. They, they use their ancestors when it's convenient, Griff. Thank you. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, trying when it's convenient. It. Yeah, when it's man. Convenient, when it's convenient, they want to use the fact that we the ancestors this and the ancestors died for that, but can't prove any of these things. Stop right. That. So, Griff, so dying way before this whole idea of us paying a poll tax in order to vote. Mm. Those, those same individuals know that, that we had mm. to pay to vote. Mm. It's called a wow. poll tax. So we need to understand the deeper science when we say our ancestors died and gave us that right. No, 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 no. They could try that small time trick with somebody <laughs> else. Not Griff. Nah. Uh-uh. Indeed, indeed. So, um, DeSantos, um, you heard the dude DeSantis. in Florida. DeSantis. DeSantis, yeah, I'm sorry, DeSantis, yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. he dropped out of the race, Griff. Um, I don't right. know much about what's going on, but I do know, do know that. And uh, he had something going on, what they were calling a war on woke. Now, Griff, yeah. I'm going to be honest. At this point, <laughs> I don't know what the hell woke means no more, Griff. Yeah. At first, when it came out, I was like, okay, is this their version of conscious? Then they took it another direction. Next thing I know, mm. it was LGBT. Then I know it had to do with the immigrants. Then it, it just, I, I don't know. They like took the word. First of all, if, if they invent the word, they have control over the word. So we don't know where the hell that word came from. Us that was in this grassroots movement, it came out during the riot, the um the shootings that was going on during the Obama administration. And they just started using it constantly in the media. And now I don't know what the hell. When, when somebody say they're against woke, I don't know whether they, they hate niggas or they just, you know, they just against the system or, you know, I, I don't know. Can, can you help me out here, Griff? What, what, well, what you... to be honest with you, when I first heard the term, I heard Erica Badu using it. No, you, you're all right. You're all right, Griff. You're all right. And it's just like a, all the other slang terms that we use. It don't mean anything to us in the way that other people are saying that's outside of our culture. And in the way she used it, I'm like, I readily understood. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Once it left her mouth and went out there, other people started taking it and you started to see it on bumper stickers and t-shirts. Oh, yeah. after that, it's a wrap. Yeah. Then they're going to introduce it to their white friends. Then they're going to put it in a couple of corny songs. And then it's going to be the next thing that we say. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, like I'm hearing this term from mm -hmm. young people. Yo, yada, 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 whoop, 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 on God, on God. I'm like, I I'm just, I'm trying to understand, on God. You understand what I'm saying? On from God. the West Coast, I'm hearing, yeah. yo, 12, yo, 12, don't fuck with me, five. And I'm like, <laughs> if you're not from these particular cultures and these circles of people, you won't understand what that means. 
Right. So when Erica Badu said it, other people started to say it, um, we already know what it meant. You understand what I'm saying? Because we, I hate, yeah, I'm not going to use the term conscious community. Those of us that were striving to get knowledge yourself, we wanted to uh, 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 would, attain. Would you, would you say grassroots instead of conscious? Would you say Would you say that? Use that word? Um, grassroots. Well, or? it depends on your age. <laughs> because okay. before that, it was the liberation struggle. Okay. Okay. Before that, it was another term. Mm -hmm. So, to summarize and capsulize all of that, mm -hmm. I, I, I think I'm 63, so liberation struggle was fine for me. But mm -hmm. I'm, I don't want to always struggle, so I don't want to keep saying that, <laughs> speaking, that speaking that into existence. Right. Um, right. Um, then I went through the period of getting knowledge yourself. So the whole idea to attain. Um, Godhood, small g, not a big one. You understand what I'm saying? Um, was a thing for me to, you know, attain that that quote unquote status. Not for anyone to look at me like that, but that's just for me, mastery of self. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So then we understand what these terms mean in the circles that we operate in. If you hit, listen to two five percent five percent is talking, the five percent nation of gods and earths, you might not understand one thing. You understand? If you're operating in that particular world, then you might understand it. So to, to hear someone say woke, that was just a basic thing. If you're awake and you're aware of what's going on in the world, not only with your life, but your family's life, your, fa your, fam your family's life, your community's life, what's going on in the world. You are awake. You're woke. End of the damn story. You understand what I'm saying? Um, other people have to take it and that's to mean what they want it to mean. And that's the problem that we're having with this term woke. So for Ron DeSantis to come along and have a whole entire war against woke, I think what they did was they took the term, redefined it, mm -hmm. gave it a new definition, remixed it, mm -hmm. put it back out among their people, mm -hmm. all right, to have a reason <clears throat> to hide their agenda, which is actually a war on black people. So we got the war on drugs, the war on education, the war on illiteracy, the war on this, the war on that, the war on woke, whatever, whatever, whatever. And when that shit caught a flat tire, he had to go in front of his own constituents and say, listen, you know something? If we can't see a clear victory, we need to let this woke shit go because that shit ain't working. If right. that's all you had in your toolbox right. on the way, on the road to the presidency, well, I he, saw that a long time ago. I'm like, man, you might as well sit down. Bro. He, he was running hard on it, Griff. I mean, he was... Yeah. He worse than Trump, man. I mean, god damn. Yeah, he was yeah, he was running hard. So this whole idea of woke, even when you look the word up, they try to define it, and it still don't mean what it really means. Right. Listen, right. brother Rich, there are some things in the way we move as uh as a people mm -hmm. that cannot be defined using the English language. It's very true. It's very true. It very good point, Griff. Yeah, good point. What is that thing called? When I see you at the club and the music's too loud and I don't, I don't you know, I can't really speak to you because the music's loud, but I see you. I see you. Mm -hmm. What's this? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So put that in the English language now. Describe that. Mm. There's certain things that we do. Like, for example, I heard this white woman saying something. Uh, my wife sent me something today. I think it's, it's going around on the internet. The white woman got called baby by an older black woman mm -hmm. and she said it hit her here in her chest so hard that she was like crap this is a white woman saying this she said it meant so much to me i love that black woman i'll do anything for her. hell if y'all need reparations you could have it this was a white woman saying this mm -hmm. simply because of the way this black woman handled her by calling her baby it did so much for her no Yo, that, you, know, you know what it, you know what that was that was just black woman magic all the black women have that. That's why it's so dangerous for um, sexy red and some of these other people to do what they're doing because that black that black woman magic is still there. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. even when we ratchet, we are gonna get some some people's attention. But when that older black woman said to that said called her called the white woman baby, it moved her. It it moved her in such a way where she just she couldn't handle it. She it almost brought her to tears. Mm. 
That that's very true, Griffin. I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, um, I don't know if you heard about this. There was a story about, um, and I'm I'm gonna be brief, Griff. Um, uh, blacks who became successful, and they decided to move outside of their community, only to find that once they moved outside of the community, their kids suffered because they didn't the, the culture, the, the the environment around them did not support them. So a woman mm. was talking about how her kid is kind of a. She's kind of left out at the mommy group at school. All the other mommies, the white mommies, they 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 form a gang and they kind of leave her out. Her son is kind of left out of the, the activities at school because the kids don't really pay him no mind. And she brought up a point. She was like, we go to the store every day. And I don't, I, what I miss most is the affection, the little subtleties that you get from living around black people, the, the hey, baby. And she was like, that means a lot when a young black child, a young black boy or a young black girl, when they walk into a store and there's an older black woman saying, hey, baby, that shit, like you said, is magic. That shit hits you. And yeah. that, that you feel that love. Mm -hmm. You feel that love. So yeah. you're absolutely right. She talked about that. And I was like, I never thought about that. Little things like that means a lot to us as a culture and a community. So yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, Professor Griff. And, and when young people see older black people interacting with one another. <laughs> Yeah, that's where you get your. That's where you get your 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 your, 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 <laughs> your cues. Yeah, yeah. How did you how did, how did you know the Black Power the soul the soul handshake? You remember the soul handshake? Yeah, yeah. Watch you me. remember when we used to bat 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 All that. Yeah. Yeah. It was like you know you you went through a series of moves with your hands with the other person. Yeah. You know they was quote unquote down. Right. You knew they had soul. You knew a few things. When the little girl is walking home from school with her friends and they stop to do double dutch, that means a lot, bro. Right, right. She's getting, she's being socialized. Right. So then when the mom and the dad move out to the suburbs to Long Island somewhere, Brentwood, and you're not, you're not with your girlfriends now, your little girls that used to go to school with in Queens, oh yeah, that presents a problem, man. You feel a sense of detachment from not only from your friends, but from your culture. We don't do the things that we used to do. Now I have to change and act like, you know, Ashley and Jan and the rest of these other people. No, 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 mm -mm. no. Culture is your way of life. How you walk, how you talk, how you think, who you interact with, how you interact with the nephews, with nature. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, certain filters, cultural filters you got set up and those particular things that happen to you, whether good or bad, come through those filters. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your culture yeah. is your way of life. You know, you you talking about the days of double dutch griff. Those days are uh, uh, I remember seeing uh, the the girls. I'm, I remember my cousin. Uh, uh, you was real good at double dutch, and I just remember a lot of the girls in the neighborhood in Harlem doing the double dutch. Um, you know, the computer has taken over now, and we don't see a lot of activities. The basketball courts are empty. Uh, a lot of things that we used to do, we don't do no more. There's a list of things, Griff, that kind of mm -hmm. we we talk about destroys the melanin, whether it's the lack of sunlight. It could be um, the food that we eat. It could mm -hmm. be the institutions who brainwash us. Do you think AI is at the top of that list right now in terms of the things that are is harming the melon because we don't tap into our soul vibration anymore because we're just stuck in front of the screen, Griff? Is it at the top of the list now, Griff, do you think? I think when you look at the list and the things that are on the list, yeah, everything, Brother Rich, I could safely say everything is taking a backseat to AI. Yeah. <laughs> because AI is it's becoming an entity. It's almost like a living entity on its own. It's like, <clears throat> it's almost like that thing over there. I, the way I view it though, I just view it as a tool. Yes, that's how I view it, yes. To assist me in whatever it is that I'm doing. You understand what I'm saying? Um, let's just say I wanted to prepare for this interview yeah. tonight. Yeah. Is the first thing I, I go to is AI? No. The first thing I went to is Griff. Yes. To ponder some of the things that you and I talked about earlier. Yeah. I said, okay, well, what's my take on it? I wanted to pull whatever that's here out first and maybe jot those things down or make a mental note of those things. If everything yeah. else I'm pulling in don't line up with that, then I'm not, I'm not going to use those things. Nah, because... Even with AI, some of those things, you got to go back over that stuff with a fine tooth comb. It may give you content, but it don't give you the character. Mm -hmm. It may mm -hmm. give you uh, volumes. You understand what I'm saying? But it don't, don't give you personality. AI mm -hmm. may give you 
um, every fine nuance of every point that you're trying to make. Mm-hmm. But where is the human aspect of it? Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's I just use AI as 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 a tool. Um, I wanted to have a conversation with someone. Someone said you need to download uh chat GPT in the uh and and ask AI. It's called Ask AI. I said, I'm not doing that. Every little thing that I want. Can you imagine your wife asking AI, AI how to cook your favorite meal? You know that. When, 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 wouldn't, it, wouldn't that be the same as Google? It's the same thing as Googling, though, right, Griff? It's so just she, shouldn't more... asking, oh, she shouldn't be asking Google. <laughs> Google is fucking AI's cousin. Shit. Oh, that's your mama's mama. That's your mama. Oh, okay, Griff. <laughs> okay, Griff said that's your mama's mama. Oh, shit. I'm, I'm talking to an elder. I'm talking to an elder tonight, y'all. You hear these answers? This ain't no young buck here now, y'all. Thank you, man. Oh, Griff said his woman better ask her mama's mama. Damn, right. Griff. That's an old recipe, Griff. Yeah, tell your wife. Not, yeah, just, yeah. Yo. <laughs> man, 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 man. I'm sure no, your man. wife not a burn, though, right? Yeah, yeah she, 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 my wife do a combination. It's, it's old recipes from um her family, and she do a little bit of Googling. So it's like a combination of both, but recipes got passed down. You know, a lot of a lot of great recipes got passed down. A lot of and then, and tell your wife, I love, honor, and respect her for that. You know why? Because some of the things inside of the recipes that was probably left for her, we can't get anymore. Yeah, yeah. The spices, the herbs, and the, the, uh, I don't the seasonings. Yeah, exactly. Because as Professor James Small said, we are the ones that came up with these recipes. They ain't never had no damn recipes. We taught the white woman how to cook. Yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But anyway, that's another story, another time. I'm open to be on the show anytime you need me, good bro. I'm here. Oh, oh you, you, uh, when, when you gotta leave, Griff, you gotta, cause it I know you. It's 51 right now. I gotta, yeah, I gotta step out in, in a minute. Okay, about, but about, I, uh, you, you could just ask the audience if they have any questions. I'm good. Give me, I, yeah, I'm yeah, good. yeah. Griff, Griff's super busy. He's out of town. Um, yeah, give me a couple of questions, uh, for Griff, real quick, family. Um, and then we could let me snatch, uh, me snatch some water real quick. Yeah, I'm listening. Me snatch all some right. water. Okay. All right. And I, I got one more question for you myself, Griff. Myself. Okay. Yeah, I, got one more yes, question. Sir. I need some water, y'all. I'm doing this fast and I am thirsty. I forgot to bring my water up here. Shout out to everybody who's doing the fast with um me and KT. But Brother Rich is thirsty and I forgot <sighs> my water, y'all. Let me ask you this, Griff. So we was talking about the whole woke thing, right? And we were saying, uh-huh. we were saying how, um, he was talking about being in a club, communicating with a brother without communicating with a brother, and right. that we can't describe it because the English language isn't suitable. Do you think that's what ultimately? Because they said we used to be t- t- use telepathy and shit like that. Do you think the English language is is what ultimately destroys who we are as a people? Because every time we try to intellectualize our actions it kind of withers away. It kind of, it dies out after that. Like, what if we never call jazz, jazz? What if we never call hip hop, hip hop? What if we never call the conscious community, conscious community? What if we just did it and people, when they tried to box us in and ask us what it is, we just said, I don't know. It just no, is. No, what, what if we said it is what it is? It, it is. <laughs> talk, talk, talk to me about the English language or maybe possibly intellectualizing spirituality and that not working in our favor, Griff. If well, that's what thing, happens. You, first of all, yeah. we cannot intellectualize spirituality. Yes, you can't do it, right? Right. Let me right, say right. that again. Yes. And, and 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 five of your guests have been on there and said the same thing. Yes. You cannot intellectualize spirituality. Mm-hmm. Um, either you're moving in that kind of way, or 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 or, or you're not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not something that you can study to become spiritual. Mm-hmm. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You can get some ideas and some other things. You understand what I'm saying? Um, the whole idea of the English language being only one of the things that entraps us and causes us to conduct ourselves in the way that the language dictates. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If there's a concept that you and I want to talk about, but neither one of us can define it, i.e. woke, there's a woman, I believe, what is her name? Mandel? The woman that wrote the book on woke but couldn't define it. <laughs> How is that? If I wrote the psychological covert war on hip hop, right? Mm-hmm. Should I not be able to come on Brother Rich's show and break down the title? Yeah. Psychological. Yeah. 
psyche, ideology, study mm -hmm. of the soul, not the mind, mm -hmm. psychological, mm -hmm. covert, mm -hmm. hidden, mm -hmm. war. Of course, we already know what that is. Sometimes yeah. there's a war on the soul, the spirit, the mind, the physical body. Sometimes there's a cold war and a hot war. We understand it. So psychological covert war on hip hop, hip hop, high infinite power healing our people. All right. We have elements to hip hop. I could go on for days without it in front of me because I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. When she was at, she wrote the book on woke and when she was asked about to define the term woke, she couldn't. You understand what I'm saying? So yes, she was not thinking that a black woman would cause her <clears throat> or call her out all right, on these terms that they redefine. If they don't get the in-office memo, then they're not going to know the script, Brother Rich. And we've seen a lot of them um, get caught out there with not getting the in-office memo and not following the script. Sometimes they just they just don't know. So yes, the English language mm -hmm. does that. Um, yes, what we expected to do and how we expected to conduct ourselves. For example, in the sports world, who was the young sister that decided to take a year or two off because she wanted to kind of deal with her mental health? Not that she had an mm. issue, but she wanted to just take some time off. There's nothing mm. wrong with that. What's her name, fam? Naomi what? Something? Tell yeah. me her name in the chat. The, um, yeah, I think she's part Japanese. Yeah, part Japanese uh, sister, black uh, Japanese and sister. And that was a beautiful, smart move that she made. She says, no, yeah. I'm in control of this. I need some time off to take care of X, Y, and Z. And there's nothing wrong with that but you see when you get up in those spaces that they allow you to get up in then they expect a different kind of behavior from you you understand what i'm saying mm, and these yeah. things are very critical for us naomi osaka, osaka. thank you osaka. thank you so yeah, yeah. right so we have to understand um how this how this particular thing thing works um i hear a lot of which is a beautiful thing morris science brothers Mm -hmm. Hebrew Israelites, um, Dane Calloway, Riz Islam. There's a few more that I'm forgetting. Mm -hmm. Masters, man, at the English language. Malcolm X, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. When you hear them speak, it's like, wow, we actually mastered a foreign language. You ever think about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a foreign language. Oh, yeah. You follow what I'm saying? So in mm -hmm. order to convey certain things to your people and be able to speak very articulate and eloquently to your people and get the, the information across to the point where it moves your people, poets do it all the time. Comedians do it all the time. Am I right or wrong? So when we listen to them, it's like, oh, I get it. You understand what I'm saying? I, mm -hmm. I get it. So the English language is the most confusing language on the planet. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? It's the most difficult language on the planet. So we have to understand this particular dynamic in which we deal with. You ask the Morris Science brothers and some of the other brothers, there's three or, three or four different English languages. There's one that you use in a courtroom, a couple different kind of languages you get pulled over by the police, another language in school, there's a whole another language in the household. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, 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 it's very confusing when you're talking about the English. The English language is like a prison. Mm. In the same frame, it traps um, your thoughts, your feelings, your ideas in words that don't even make any goddamn sense. Right, right. Uh, we're gonna do one question from the two more people, two more questions from the people, then we get out of here. But shout out to everybody in the audience, uh, listening, supporting. Make sure you like the video if you're not subscribed. Make sure you subscribe. I got a lot of great videos just like this one happening pretty much every day on the channel, every other day, uh, something like that. Uh, we got about 2,500 people in the chat right now. Um, we, me and Griff got some announcements we're going to make soon. Um, Griff got a, a music project, and I got something. Uh, we're about to release Holy Ghost 3 on a digital platform, so stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. But let's get to these last two questions. Uh, the first one is the Super Chat one. Do you think, Griff, using AI is exactly what helping it become more human? It learns from us, so are the masses using it as a tool or is it using us, Professor Griff? That's the problem that I'm having here. When that individual say it learns from us. Us who? <laughs> well. who, is us? who is the us that it learns from? What if them people use the not us? 
wasn't that wasn't there a movie us yeah. movie uh what if they use the people that are not us because they're not us what if they use them people to help shape ai for example and this may is very simple i don't want people coming at me for this but this is something i think about often you remember we went through a period where you found hand sign hand sanitizer every goddamn where mm, i know i know exactly what you're talking about in the bathroom, outside of the bathroom, on the bus, at restaurants, everywhere people had in their pocketbook, on their keychains, whatever. Mm-hmm. You can rarely find that shit now. Mm-hmm. So I was going to the bathroom at this college the other day. I ain't gonna tell you which college. So I went to go, um, I went to go uh wash my hands. Mm-hmm. And now you know they have the sink now with the sensor on it, and you gotta wave your hand in yeah. front of the sink. And that's yeah. to pick up whether or not if you have an implantable viral microchip in your hand, <laughs> so the water can come out. <laughs> oh man, Griff, Griff. You know Griff. what I do though? So I what? take my pen and some metal, and I wave it, and then when the water comes out, I wash my hands because I don't have a chip. So I'm saying to myself, Griff. what if they fine tune the uh, the software inside of the the, uh, the water sensor, and it picks up the fact that you have a high concentration of melanin in your hands, and the water don't come on. Griff, man, that's that's a lot to take in right there, Griff. That's a, <laughs> but that's a, a wow, wow. The dryer, the dryer that dries your hands. It's a sensor. Yeah, yeah. What wow. if it picks up the melanin and it never comes on? You you might be too deep for me, Griff. Wow, that that's <laughs> that that's something right there. I never, I would have, I would have never imagined that. Wow, that's a whole new level of conspiracy. <laughs> you and I gonna talk about that. The, the that, us, that the that's us, deep. That's deep. Yeah, it learns from us. So are the masses using it as a tool or is it using us? And that individual, that last question is absolutely correct. It's using us to gather data, to know how to know how we move. Thank you for that question. That was a very, well, questions, plural. It was deep. Indeed, indeed. We're going to get to um, this last question. Shout out to everybody. Um, Kim Lee with the super chat. Uh, we're going to get to this last question. <clears throat> Can you hustle and still be in the spiritual, brother Rich? Oh, of course. Uh, yeah, you know it. It, it, it seems this is a problem with a lot of conscious people, and I've talked about this with um. Well, I don't want to say conscious. Let's just use the word spiritual uh, in terms of them pursuing uh, a career or pursuing money in this world. It, they almost feel guilty for the pursuit of money and being spiritual at the same time. So could you address people who may feel guilty in the pursuit of acquiring finances and trying to be spiritual in this room at the same time, Professor Griff? I want to add on to that, but go ahead. Yeah. Should the, the UPS worker feel guilty putting on that brown uniform every day? No. That That is his hustle. Some people say, well, that's his job. Do you understand what I'm saying? So whether he has a side hustle or whatever, don't feel guilty. The UPS worker, the Federal Express worker, to do the work at the post office. You understand what I'm saying? The one that work at Walmart should not feel guilty. But now, if we're talking about a hustle, what kind of hustle are you talking about? Right, because I see somebody in chat. Can, it can, depends can, can. on what your hustle is. What, what, you understand what I'm saying? So, for example, I haven't had a job in I don't know how long. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if I put out, damn, almost nine books, <clears throat> if that is my hustle, no, I put spirit into that. <laughs> you yes. understand what I'm saying? So no, I, I don't feel guilty about you using what the creator blessed me with to put down in a book so I could give it to the people to help raise the conscious level of the people. I don't feel guilty about that. Absolutely not. But yeah. that is my hustle. It's a righteous hustle. You understand what I'm saying? I don't do anything negative to get money from people. I don't, I just don't have that on my mind. It's not my spirit. It's not who I am. Right, you understand right. what I'm saying? So it depends on what hustle this individual is talking about. And I'm thinking by the way he wrote it, it might mean the other hustle. Might, <laughs> might mean something else, huh? Might yeah. So would you, would you respect, to... Griff, Griff, would you respect personally, would you respect if you men, I'm sure you've come across plenty of brothers who still in, they call it the trap in the streets, and he may move a little yay in the streets, but after he move a little yay, he support Professor Griff, he support Rich, he support... um. The products from Dr. Sabi back in the day, he teaching his family about health, wealth, this and that. Do you have respect for that level of contradiction where I move a little yay in the streets, but I make sure I give back to my community. I'm teaching my family 
right and wrong, that my kids go to a black school and so on and so forth. Do you have respect for an individual like that? No, but what I do respect is the fact that that particular individual has sense enough to take that uh, money that he's getting, even though it's, it's almost like you, you, you're getting the money over here, you're destroying someone's life, but yet you're trying to help someone's life over <clears> here. <throat> So if that, I, I know some individuals like that. They gave me the opportunity to be in their life in a certain kind of way. And those particular individuals that I'm talking about, and they know who they are when they hear this, move themselves away from that particular life into a life where they took that same energy, that same know-how, and flipped it into something else. And they don't have that life anymore. Hmm. This is before the bread got ran out. This is before the prison. This is before... You understand? They put their family in jeopardy. This was before all that. Some of them, one or two of them didn't make it. It ended up on lockdown. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But the, the couple that I'm talking about, they're like, you know some Griff? You right, man. I'm glad you was man enough to at least be transparent with me and be open and say, you understand what I'm saying? I don't right. need to be doing this. You absolutely right, man. So, you know, send me some things that you think I might be interested in. You understand what I'm saying? Sent them some things. A few years later, they're not in that life no more. That's just one story with one individual, you know, from me to one other individual. I'm not saying that that's happening across the board. I would like for it to happen across the board. You understand what I'm saying? Because there's a righteous hustle out here that we can get. I know some dude that hustled the uh, stock markets. You, you understand what I'm saying? Um, there's a dude right now that's hustling chat GPT, <laughs> teaching people how to make prompts. That's a hustle. But it's a righteous hustle, man. Mm -hmm. I'm Indeed, not going to anyone that's killing our people and feeding death to our people. I want to make that clear. Not. Last question for me. This is a quick one, Griff. If you was running the hood, you was running hoods in America, like in terms of mm -hmm. you had the, as they say back in the day, you had the juice. Um, a lot of people feel as though you can't completely get rid of the hustlers or the drug dealers. Would you work with them opposed to trying to annihilate them? And when I say work with them, like, it, like, let me use this for example, Griff, like y'all got a couple of hours in that corner, no kids, no women allowed. If, if the persons are like, there's certain rules and regulations to the hustlers, or do you just flat out try to get rid of all the uh, drug dealers? Because some people feel as though there's always going to be drugs circulating in the hood. That's how it's always been. And that's how it's always going to be. What's your thoughts on that before we get out of here? Me being very transparent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't annihilate them. I, I, I need them. Ooh, that's honesty. I, 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 I need Ooh, them. Griff, being honest. No. Talk to me. No, talk to me, Griff. No, I, I need them because when I was doing that work in the streets, trying to get our people, they came to my aid. Oh yeah. When I, I need, when I need, when I, when I needed that thing, thing. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yo, I'm the problem. What you need? You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. When I needed to find the dude that 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 sexually assaulted the sister over here or robbed the brother, who was I going to? Right. My people that had the eyes on the streets, they had their ear to the street that knew the streets. I had to go to them because I wasn't street like that. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, that Some of them could be allies, of course, man. Yeah, I definitely would sit down with them and be like, mm -hmm. look, this is what I need to do. I'm going to need this much money. I'm going to need this, uh, this much manpower. I'm going to need yada, 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 whoop de whoop. You understand? I'm going to see y'all next Friday. Cool? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm, yeah. A mili I'm a military scientist, bro. Military I, I'm not, scientist. I, I'm not one of them other individuals, bro. I'm serious. I'm real yeah. with mine. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I'm going I'm to need, need them dudes. <laughs> Griff, Griff, man, I, had, I know you got to go. I don't want to uh, hold you any longer. Always have an amazing time talking and kicking it with you. We we got a, we got a packed house tonight in the chat. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'll get you back on here in February when we tell make a few announcements for the people. Okay. But uh, before we get out of here, let the people know what you got going on, how they can follow you, and any projects you got out right now, my brother. Okay. Right now, I'm about to release my children's book. You are the song that you sing, book two. Yes. Um, I want to thank Guy and his wife, Miss Julia, and the Malore family um, for contributing and the support that they've been giving. I want to thank my wife was uh, putting up with them late nights on the other side of the bed with the light over me like oh, <laughs> at work. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know man. what that's about. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 you know, and also I just released the project that, you know, I want to talk to you about the Asapo Soul because it's one thing to talk about the deaths that are happening in hip hop and all of the chaos that's going on. It's another thing to, to understand it, put it under the microscope like yourself, Black Dot, the pills, 
do, um, your yeah. brother do, you yeah. understand? I mean, a uh, Red and Pill's brother do, and, it's, and some of your guests do. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to do something about it. It's right. another thing to offer a project called the Asapo Soul that I'm offering to balance this thing out. We need to press, we need to turn the volume down, man. Whew. And just start thinking about some of the things we doing. I want it to be so beautiful in the room when we present this body of work to the, I want a person to be able to hear themselves think. Damn, Briff. You understand what I'm saying? I want yeah. them to be able to hear their heart beat. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? I want them to be able to detect a fly passing gas in the ethers. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's how quiet we need to get in order to understand and and and, and listen to the, the vibration of the soul and what it's speaking to us <clears> about <throat> calming the violence down, mm. turning the volume. That everybody don't need to be lit. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody mm. don't need to be um just over the top with everything. You understand what I'm saying? Let's quiet it down so we can begin to listen to one another again, simply because if you put out a beautiful project like you just did, right? Mm -hmm. And you say, well, only this segment of people are going to hear it. You got to ask yourself the question, why? Mm. We, we didn't make it for only that segment of people. Right, right. You understand? Right. We thought we made a beautiful project. You understand? Yeah. We want everyone to hear it. The whole idea that our music has to be heard through the damn cell phone, the black mirror. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a man. Thing, man. Yeah. The, 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 the energy and the frequency and the vibration, the four, the 432 hertz, or whether it's um the uh, the other frequencies that are coming through your songs cannot even fit in that, yeah. In this cell phone, the speaker that's in this cell phone. Yeah. So even if they listen to it on their cell phone, they're not getting the depth of what you're offering through your sound, bro. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. we have to understand that um, I put together the Asapo Soul in order so that we could begin to come together and know what real music is. So we can stop, so we can think, press the pause button for a second, mm -hmm. let's take a deep breath, and let's rethink this thing. We got to, not only myself, but other people, Andre 3000 and some other people have to offer something different in order to change the dynamic of what's going on with young people, man. That, any that's just it, man. Beautiful. Any any yeah. contact any contact info? Uh, yes, yeah, so you can hit me up at 678-557-2919. My music is on Bandcamp. Uh just professorgriff.bandcamp.com. And my my cash app is just dollar sign professor griff. If anyone uh wants to donate to the cause, listen, let me just double back on one thing. We need to use AI as a tool to get some of these things done. There, um, there's a situation coming along, and I'll speak to you when we get off here some other day, that um, the idea of the only frequency that they're allowing now on their mm -hmm. radio stations and whatever, so, so, so much so we got to take certain frequencies and hide them in the music in order to reach the souls of our people. But that's another conversation we'll have a little bit later on. So, yeah, people can reach me, 678-557-2919. One nine. The project is called the Asapo Soul by Professor Griff. I love y'all to life, family, and I want y'all to know that. And I'm going to demonstrate that through the work that I um, that I give to the family. All right, those are just not words. I love you. We have to start showing proving with our ways and actions. As always, a pleasure, family. Thank you for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow night, family, with Professor James Small. You can tune in tomorrow at nine. Professor James Small will be live on Black Magic Three Six Three. With that being said, Griff. Appreciate you, my brother family. Get out of here. I'll see you tomorrow, right? Peace. Take All care. Right. Have a good night, family.